Great. So welcome. Um, this is a uh, GSOC uh, Google Sum of Code uh, panel, as we have that every year, because we have a, a LibreOffice Google Sum of Code season uh, every year since the inception of the project. Um, everybody, uh, I think, we're m whom do we miss? Is there more mentors here? Stefan, I don't know. Cloth. So if anybody, Cloth, want to come on stage? As the mentors, at least, the st we, we, don't, we don't have all the students here, unfortunately. Uh, so we have Paris here, and we have um, two mentors presenting for their students, and we have uh, two videos. So, come on. <laughs> so this is, this is a panel. And um, very quickly, so GSOC, if you don't know what it is, um, that's an annual program sponsored by Google. Um, and um, it's, it used to be for students only, uh, but it opened recently for everybody um, uh, eight, uh, uh, older than 18. And there's two kinds of projects, a smaller one and a larger one. It's always in the, in the summer break, like US kind of US centric um, for US Americans. And uh, yeah, LibreOffice, as I said, has been part of GSOC uh, from the start since 2011. We're very grateful for Google uh, to sponsor students this year. Uh, we had um, five projects, um, so five students and a bunch of mentors. Thanks to all uh, the mentors and the uh, org admins. And of course, thanks to Google for providing um, the stipends. Um, but first and foremost, of course, thanks to the students for doing great work and thanks to the mentors uh, who put in su substantial amounts of time they're mentoring. Okay, and then without further ado, let's start with the student presentations. And the first one is uh, Paris with the adding AP and G support. Hello, hello. Oh, that's a typo. <laughs> uh, my project was on adding AP and G support. Um, so. What is an APNG? It is an animated PNG. Uh, it is an unofficial extension that was added to PNG uh, around uh, 2008 uh, by the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, initially, it didn't have that good support, so it wasn't really ever added to LibreOffice. But eventually, it started getting supported by all major browsers that I could test, and a lot of image editing software. Uh, it has some advantages over GIF. So one is partial transparency. Uh, GIF supports transparency. You can make the background transparent, but you can't have partial transparency. Um, so PNG supports that. Uh, and then you also have direct coloring. Uh, GIF works with palettes. You can have 256 colors per frame, but PNG doesn't care, uh, and generally smaller file sizes from, uh, from testing. Uh, this format is backwards compatible with PNG also, uh, which means that in the past, uh, APNGs would uh, appear as the first PNG frame. Uh, so how does it work? Uh, it introduces three new ancillary chunks. Uh, in the PNG format, uh, unsupported, ancillary chunks are uh, ignored. So that's also another reason why it was backwards compatible. So the first one would be the ACTL, which just describes how many frames there are and how many times uh, the animation should be replayed. Um, the FCTL, which describes uh, the frame that is upcoming, like the sequence number, width, height, offsets, etc., And then the FDAT, which is like the IDAT chunk, it it uh, contains the pixels of the frame, and it's also preceded by a sequence number to match it up with the uh, FCDL. So the work done for this project was import support. Uh, we use the graphic class uh, and the animation class that we have in LibreOffice that is used by uh, GIFs already, and export support. So because it's imported into a GIF, it also means that there is support to uh, round trip from GIF to APNG and back. And also rendering. Uh, however, there were some bugs. Um, the first one, the first big one, 
uh, that still needs to be fixed is uh, uh, partial transparency was broken after the big switch from transparency to alpha. There was some work uh, in fixing that, but there's still stuff to do. I think it was fixed in Skia, but not in hardware rendering. Um, then presentation uh, mode seems to ignore blending modes. Um, there, are, there are some blending modes in the APNG format, uh, which uh, allow to either blend with the previous frame or not. It didn't seem to work in presentation, need to look into that. And then uh, round tripping wouldn't retain the animation, it says, but actually I noticed that uh, the image itself would be correct. It's just that when opened, through an ODP file, it just wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't import as an animation, it wouldn't stand import as a static frame. Um, so that's work to be done there. It should be finished before 24.2, hopefully, and have it nice and working. And of course, to add unit tests. And yeah, that's all. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Paris, and thanks also to Quickie for mentoring. Uh, next one up is uh, Deepham's work on converting writer um, API tests to C++. I don't know, I think Quickie is not here, so uh, let me pretend I know something about it uh, <laughs> and, and read the slides. So. Um, the, the reason, so this is an ongoing process since, since quite a number of years, and um, why is it uh, uh, necessary or why is it actually desirable to convert um, that um, the, um, the Java-based uh, test is rather quite complex, both in writing and also in debugging and fixing. So if you break a test and figuring out why you broke it, is quite a level more complex than if you could just uh, uh, attach a debugger because it's a C++ test because, of course, the core is also C++. And then you have the bridging in between, and so you, you really don't have a backtrace, etc. So it's, it's really quite, quite easier for the project in total and for the poor developer who broke a test um, than to fix that up. Um, and it's also substantially faster to run, obviously, if you don't need bridging, if you don't need, need to pull up Java. And, and that's probably the most important bit, so you don't need a Java dependency, um, you don't need Java installed, you don't need to build everything with Java, because usually you don't need that for almost anything uh, when you develop LibreOffice. So, so that it's, it's super useful for the project. Mm. Conversion steps, quite involved. Um, so I'd lead the, I'd let that stand here. You can, you can read that if you like, if you're interested. I think the bottom line, the, the, the big picture, the summary is um, it's complicated. It's a lot of work. You need to focus. So it's kind of ideal to have that as a GSOC project where you, the, the, the student has the time. Um, and the focus and can run this like get into that process and run it then for a number of tests rather than uh, some project volunteer who has a few hours every day um, and then like gets distracted and something else happens. So, so it's a it's good thing to, to have that and to have it uh, in, in this like focused form uh, for GSOC. Examples, um, what, was, uh, what was done there? Um, um, it's here, like um, some, some, some conversion there. That's also useful um, to reference that, like as work done, as a template for, for future work. It's always great to have some example that people can then follow um, for, um, um, for new contributors uh, who want to get into that. Um, yeah, so project was successful, very grateful for that, very important for the project. Um, and of course, uh, thanks um, to, to the mentors um, for, um, for supporting um, uh, Deepam there. And next one up is um, Byram with the search functionality to options dialog. And that's something that I think Haiku can show us. I can show a little bit. I can try to show a little bit. Um, I mentored this project, Byram um, conducted it. Uh, I was rather the co-mentor. The uh, first mentor was Andreas Heinisch, so all the kudos to him. The issue itself is pretty clear. There's a request from Baxilla to add a search functionality to the options dialog. Options are 
very complex. We provide all the customization that uh, one can imagine, and it is necessary to search through it. Everyone experiences the situation. To uh, being interested in some particular uh, switch, but looking through all the tabs is annoying, so the idea was to add a search field. It took Byram not much time. I think it was the first patch was uh, realized after a week, and it um, was able to reduce the tree on the left side of the option into what you are looking for. So if you type something, the tree reduces. The question is how to get the data into the search. And the first approach was um, to do it while compile time, to extract all the strings from the UI files. Every uh, entry on the left side, the tree on the left side, uh, has a separate UI file with strings, and you don't have access to it uh, during runtime. So strings needs to be accessed somehow else, and first approach was to extract it just during compile time, create some text file, large text files, and take it with the application into uh, the product. It has a lot of... It has a lot of shortcomings. For example, it is not local specific. It is depending on the language that you have while compilation, obviously English. So uh, second and a little bit ahead, uh, it is patch set 36. So a little bit later, um, everything was changed and the data is now created uh, at the first start. It is parsed through all the uh, individual um, tabs running in the thread, and it is blazingly fast, surprisingly fast. I cannot judge how well it is implemented, but I haven't seen any delay in the creation. So it looks, in the end, as requested. It is typical uh, bad presentation. Um, the, the field where internet is um, written, that's a search field, and you, it is a true field, so you see it. And I searched here in this example for internet, and the left side is reduced, and the, you uh, get way more quicker to the result. Let's try a live example, if we have time. Have, do we? challenge is now to get the Mac on <coughs> this. Not a, big, not a big challenge, apparently. So this is important information. This is um, a, a locally built uh, variant. It is submitted to master, so it will be in the next release. What you do here is to type enter and you see it reduces everything, and you get all the entries here on the left side with internet. Internet is a bit boring. Let's try this uh, icon, and you get quickly to the place where icons are um, uh, somehow on the UI. Another example that is more realistic, um, quite often you want to change units, so let's search for unit, and you get to a place Unit, ah, great, inches. How about few? What is a unit here? Um, part of the implementation was to not only use the strings that you see in the UI, but also the um, access, that's a missing part, but also the tooltips. If a um, control has a tooltip that contains uh, information, you may be interested in this too. And here on this page, it is, yeah, you can see inch here as a unit. Uh, the horizontal ruler has some unit. And you probably want to change it too. If you want to set it to centimeters, you want to change all the inch to centimeters. So you search for unit and you find the place where unit is addressed in the tooltip. Future, future enhancement, enhancements. 
to this is to also add the accessibility strings. It is um, not implemented. And to make it easier to find the exact place. Could be, for example, to draw a frame around the, the actual control uh, that is um, in dubbed here. Awesome.